The Kremlin is trying to compensate for the sanction strikes with the regime of total savings. They immediately cut off spending on non-strategic, in opinion of the Russian political elite, areas, education, science and medicine. But the savings on the already meager financing of these programs did not help. Then in Moscow they decided to raise rates to freeze 700 infrastructure projects at once. Road construction, aviation and even energy was cut. Energy projects and its development provided the main source of income for the federal budget. The economic development of the Russian Federation in the near future will slow down significantly, precisely due to the fact that it is physically impossible to fully ensure import substitution in all sectors of the economy. According to my calculations, next year it will be the lack of investment resources, money first of all, but not only, that can give an additional 5-6% fall in the GDP this year, in addition to the 9% drop in the GDP this year. In fact, this is a big blow to the Russian economy. I think that unemployment, which arises as a result of the departure of Western companies, Another million people will lose their jobs due to the cessation of investments this year and next, even more next year. And then a new strike to the railroad. The Kremlin has run out of imported bearings for the repair and production of railway cars. Already at the beginning of August, 10,000 railway cars were removed, and by the end of August, under the threat of being removed from routes, there will already be about 200,000 railway cars, which is about 25-30% of all the railway cars that are in service in the Russian Federation. Along with the railway cars, specialized factories also stopped working. In order to start mass dismissals and not to admit their own incompetency, the workers were sent, some on vacation, some on unpaid leave. The same story in related industries that depend on railway transportation – miners, metallurgists, builders. There is nothing to transport their products with. The mining industry will suffer great damage because some of the development of the layers will be stopped due to the inability to transport products. Europe refused Russian coal, and it is quite problematic to even sell what is available to the Chinese markets due to the fact that there is a huge shortage of railway cars. Even the Kremlin's priority, military-industrial complex, is in crisis. According to US intelligence, Moscow is buying millions of artillery shells and short-range missiles from North Korea. And this means that the Federation is not able to produce its own ammunition. Although the Kremlin's propagandists are trying to convince the Russians that the sanctions do not work. If the sanctions have no effect, so why do you want so much to lift sanctions? By the end of the year we will see the first interim serious result of the sanctions damage to the Russian economy. According to various data, from 10 to 15 percent decline in GDP, we should see at least at the end of the year. Russians are already feeling the consequences of the sanctions, the shortage of once familiar goods, rising prices. All this is just the beginning. People are living. According to polls, people talk about the deterioration in the quality of life. People say that they can afford less. This is 55% of respondents. In addition, very often for large cities such as St. Petersburg and Moscow, Special conditions are created, where wages and incomes are not decreasing. Instead, a conditional employment is created for payments, while the rest of Russia has indicators that are deteriorating. The priorities are obvious. It is important for the Kremlin to maintain prosperity in the center of the empire, while the periphery, depressed regions, will continue to slide into poverty and unemployment. Experts predict that in the near future Russians will begin mass internal migration in search of work. Reported by Sergei Kulias, Ksenia Barvinenko, UATV News.